Hey guys, and how's it going? Yeah, I wish this video was about working on the Amante GT. This car has been sitting for since 1977. Last video, we made one good engine out of the two, got it running on the stand, and we're going to move forward with putting it in. Unfortunately, my uh, daily driver has decided to uh, take a dump on me. We went to go take a drive up north. This is our beater that we run. You know, if we're going in the woods or something, not worried about scratching it. Uh, it we we're going to go get gas. And when I pulled up to the pump, the idle got real bad, real broken up. Check engine lights started flashing like crazy. So we parked this and we ended up taking a different vehicle. So that being said, we're going to get into this one, see what happened to it, see if we can fix it. Without further ado, let's give her. I guess we'll start it, hopefully, and see what it does. I don't know if you could feel it. I think the idle is so high that it is not if that goes to kick down it runs very rough or idles very rough i can feel it right now if i'm hitting it he's breaking up give it a second there it goes Pop it in gear. Do you hear it? There goes the engine flashing. All right, let's go throw a scanner on it. And see what it says. Random multiple cylinder misfire and an O2 sensor. I know the O2 sensor has been an issue. That's been on for a little while. So we got two for O2 sensor and two for random misfire. Not that really did. So random misfire and multiple cylinder. I would think if it was like say two cylinders that the coil packs had gone bad on. It would it would say what cylinders there were not just multiple uh, cylinder misfire so uh, low fuel pressure i would think low fuel pressure would come up also and then when you rev it it seems fine doesn't seem like it, it is falling on its face anywhere on the higher end side although it's down on power it's not like it if you were low on fuel pressure you'd hit it it, it would die altogether. it just wouldn't be able to keep up and it doesn't do that hmm Let's go pop the hood. You just see anything visually first. It's really common that the coil packs do screw up. They'll get a crack down the center of them. Is that a drip right there? See wet around the thermostat. Yeah, I am not seeing anything. Are we low on coolant? Well, it's up there. I did do a little service on it a while ago. Again, it was idling a little rough. I want to say for, I don't know, the last six months. Nothing terrible. You come to a stop. It just had a little bit of shake to it. I did plugs in it about a year ago. And at that time, I believe I, you know, I would have inspected all the coil packs and saw if there was any cracks. Not that it couldn't have gotten worse from there. It had the belt done at 114 thou. I think it has... 190 maybe two getting close to two unfortunately i think we're going to end up putting it on the lift i don't think we're going to actually i do see an antifreeze leak right down there it's dripping hmm i'm wondering 
I have a suspicion. <laughs> it's not a good one either. All right, I'm gonna go move some vehicles around. We'll get this on the lift, and uh, I guess we're gonna have to operate. Guess how many miles are on it? 203. Probably even see it in the camera shaking, the whole truck shaking. Yep. At least we have a lift to work off of. Could be worse, right? How's that light for lighting? Decent? I say we get that off, we'll get this ductwork out of our way, and we'll see about... I have my suspicions. I don't know if you guys want to answer a guess right now, too. But my thought is, time timing belt jump. Sometimes, nothing will call anybody out. Sometimes, People take the cheap way out. They put the sticker on it. They don't actually change the belt. I'm not saying that that's what's happened on this one, but it's a possibility. We are going to dig our way down. That one's not going to go. Let me get some uh, plastics out of our way. There you go. Yeah, we definitely got a drip happening right there. And I see it running. I, I literally can see it dripping actively. Let me put it to point. Right there. It's going down. And unfortunately, what it, there is, there is the timing belt is behind there. I'm wondering if it corroded the belt and caused it to do what it did. I see a crack. Let me get you in there. I see a crack on that plastic mounting for that cover. Let's see if we can get one of the two side covers off. Either this one or this one. I'm not sure which one's going to be easier for us. Yeah, let's get one of them off and we'll eyeball it. Let's see if we can see the condition of it before we dig in. Got you kind of zoomed in. Get the bolts out of this cover. Let's see if we can get there's a wire going through the center of it. At least we could see it. I don't know what the factory belt would be. It says continent. Con the Contentech C O N T I T E C H. I'm willing to bet that that has uh, been replaced. So that's a good sign. At least it wasn't something funky as far as that's going on. Let's see if we can get a bar on the lower crank. I'm going to rotate it so it's at top dead center. And we'll see if we get any marks up here. And see if they correspond with top dead center in that. And we'll know right away whether it jumped or not. Well, we still have the other side to do yet. But if this one's already off, then we know, you know, that this is definitely the direction to go look. Have you clamped to the body of the truck? Hopefully it doesn't shake. I'm gonna try turning it by the cam. Let's see if that'll even work for us. And then we'll see if a mark comes up. It should be a dot or a line on the pulley. Let's see if I can even turn it from there. Might be too much. That goes. That's too much. I gotta get on the crank. Tried to cheat. Yeah, I'm gonna get that fan out of our way. Just no elbow room down in there. Hopefully I can smack it with a hammer, break it loose, and not have the other pulley come out. It's not breaking anything. And then we can put a couple of nuts back on. We can leave the
We got a mark coming around. We're gonna. I don't know if we got to go for that line or that line. I would think that would be top dead center. Let's go put it there. Now the crank can either be on the money or it could be 180 out. Because the crankshaft turns once for every time the camshaft turns no, the way around. <laughs> so it can be 180 out still. Let's go see what we got down below. And looking. I do not see the timing works anywhere to be seen. I'm gonna go spin it around till that mark is up and then we'll see where the cams are. Because we know if we got this one, we have to have the cams. So let's go do a rotate on that. Let's go mark the outside of this so that we'll know where this one is. We don't have to kind of guess. We know that that's where that is. We'll be able to see it from the front. So if it's at, say, five o'clock, we'll be able to tell how easy it is to see. But that is our top dead center right there. And we'll pass it just a hair. Now I'm looking at that pulley. It could be. That's what I say about it. it could be 180 out. So that's on the bottom. I got to go spin the crank around one more time. Get that to top dead center. We'll see how close that is to zero. And that is to zero. All right, so I spun that around one. I got it on zero down below. And we are lining up to that straight line. So I have a feeling that's probably zero. And I want to think maybe that's timing or cam timing or... I just haven't looked it up yet, but it does line up to that. If we came over and we were out here, I would say, yeah, we got that being an issue. But that is only one side. It doesn't mean that the other side did not jump. So I'm going to, unfortunately, have to pull this one back. At least, even if we just pull it back a little bit, we can see what's going on. But let me go get a bunch of screws out of that one and see how that works for us. Last bolt. You guys are hovering on the air cleaner box. Afraid of. I gotta get you repositioned. We move, we move the light first. So what we have is that mark is off by about three teeth. Well, there's your problem. Let me go get. Ooh, I see. I see something happening down in there too. Let me get that cover the rest of the way out, and I'll bring you back. All right. Here's some a little bit of evidence up top and I thought it was going to be antifreeze. What do you think it was? What do you think caused it? It's nasty, I'll tell you that. <laughs> you ready? Oh boy. Get you down inside there. That is what is left of either a mouse I'm going to say a mouse. I think a mouse got in there on the belt. Got a nest in here somewhere. It fired up. It went around the belt. Caused the belt to jump a tooth. Or it's like about three teeth. Actually, do we have to be on the T or the straight up? Straight up, right? Yeah, straight up. <laughs> so how nasty is that? Well, there's your problem. A little critter got in there. He made her jump. Not just for lawnmowers, huh? I was thinking maybe the antifreeze got to leaking. And when I, I know the red antifreeze in Toyota, when it evaporates, it leaves like a crust behind. And I was thinking maybe that's what it was. And then uh, a stalactite of sorts went around the pulley. I was not expecting a critter 
You want to clean that out for me? <laughs> Gross. All right, so I'm going to... We really should change the belt and do all that kind of stuff. But it, literally, you have to tear the whole front of the engine apart to go do it. Let me go think about this a little bit. See what I want to do. I'm going to go inspect the look at that belt. Maybe I'll give it a spin around and inspect it. I do not see any cracking or anything like that. But I'm going to look for damage on that. And then we'll maybe make a decision from there. I'm wondering if we can just get it, slip it off, rotate it to where the cam is supposed to be and just put it all back together without draining the cooling. So actually, we've got to fix the leak too. Let's go take a mirror real quick and go see what's leaking. Maybe it's just right at the end of this hose right here. I think you can see in the mirror. I don't even get you closer. Hold on. There you go. It looks like it's right at the base of that. I'm going to say it's probably the thermostat housing right there. Whatever this is. Looks like it's dripping right out of there. I was wondering if it was going to be this hose right here, but I don't think so. Hmm. That's got to come off. This whole assembly has to come off of here. I don't think uh, cranking down on the bolts going to fix it for us. It looks like it has some kind of gooey sealer. Whatever that stuff is. You can't see, can you? Whatever that stuff is. It looks like this also kind of goes in and, and rotates and comes out. It looks like a weird... I've done one of these once before, but it was a long time ago. See how that kind of looks like it locks in a weird kind of position? Hmm. All right, well, I'm going to go spin that belt around. Actually, I'm going to go in there with a little set of jaws and grab... Um, what do you want to name them? <laughs> Let's have fun naming them. Yes, this is going to be very gross. I'm just going to go in and grab him. Uh, he's a... Uh, people call him Ferris. For the Ferris wheel. You get Ferris Bueller's day off. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hope you're not eating lunch. I don't know. Definitely not having a party of it. I actually saw it too. I don't know if you can see it. Get you down in there. Down in the intake manifold. Get your reposition. I see a nest. Way back in there. I think. There it is. Probably. Came home on a nice cold day. The engine was hot. Went up there and nested himself inside there. Not quite sure where, where he wiggled himself in. You know, mice get in little tiny areas. Very easy anyway. But definitely um, couldn't keep up with the Ferris wheel, I guess. <laughs> right. As I was. Well, we got to get the coolant out of it no matter what. We got to fix that leak. So let's see if we can get her to start peeing for us. I wonder if because the antifreeze was leaking, I wonder if, you know how they say pets are attracted to antifreeze and they careful where you leave it, they'll want to go eat it or lick it and they get sick and die. I wonder if the same is true about mice and rats and that kind of thing, if they, the leak was there and that maybe attracted them. That's just a guess though. So while that's draining, this is the truck that I bought I think I paid 2,800 bucks for it. And it had a bad frame that was rotted out. And common, you know, you tell you the comas and the tundras, the frames rot out. And this one was all blown out all through here. And I think on the sides I did it too. I think it was here. And I think the, the side over there. I don't think it's holding up pretty good. Needs another spray oil. What they did was they sprayed undercoating. Here's the other one. They sprayed undercoating under it. After it went in for an inspection in Toyota. It's a scam. It's bullshit is what it is. So they went and they spray. They, they knew the frames were going. So they went and they sprayed them. They would inspect them. And then we would spray this crap over the top of them. This like flaky undercoating. Let me see if I can find you some. 
I went around after we got the frame fixed and put a bunch of uh, barn chain oil, soaked the thing down with barn chain oil afterwards. I'm sure I can find you some that's still on there, right there. But yeah. So they, they come back and they put the spray crap, which was like a, and it got hard. It wasn't like it, you know, there it is. And what that did is it actually trapped the rust. Here's more of it up here. It made the condition even worse. I think that's what caused this frame to blow out was actually them doing that instead of doing like what I did with the oil here. Here's some, here's a big piece. A screwdriver will probably help. There it goes. So they did that and it actually made it worse. So I went around, scraped the whole thing down, shot it with oil. You can see here's some of it in there. And so we did that. There's a piece that we can go look at. They sprayed that on there and then it just come, holds water behind it. It made the condition even worse. So it needs another spray job. But for what I have in this truck, it's been holding up pretty good. And the rear was gone too. I had to go do a rear diff. And so I got $3,200 in this whole truck and it's been doing well. Again, I put, I think about 40,000 miles and hard miles on it. Not like they were easy. All right, battery's flashing. Here's a good spot to go show. So they sprayed all this crap on here. And this is what it does. See how it holds all that rust and crap right behind it? Yeah. Now you know why this is considered the beater truck. I know its life expectancy is uh, limited. Yeah, at some point the frame's gonna get so bad where this one is just done too. So this is why we take this one, we run in the woods and branches rub up against it and scratch it. We're not that concerned about it. But no more blowouts in it. Again, it's it's crusty, but it's got delamination. It's two different. Those are two frames overlapping each other, right there. That's not. They're not delaminated from each other. It's just a bunch of that rubber crap they put on. So again, it could use another scraping down and another respray. There's some. That's what it does right there. It was definitely a. You know, in my opinion, a bullshit move by Toyota to go do that, inspect them and spray that crap on them. They were better off just leave them alone. They would have been better off if they even didn't do that at all. It was just a way to get out of the... They uh, warrantied it for 10 years. And then it would make it past the 10 years by them, you know, doing that crappy spray stuff and saying, okay, y'all, you're all good. And that's what did its damage to the... It literally had holes up in the frame up inside here. So it's all been repatched and again I sprayed a bunch of barn chain oil in the rails and in the frames. So Alright, I think we're done peeing. Let's go continue on with our little project up there. Well hopefully you can see and it's not a great spot to get you tucked in there, but I got the fan shroud out, the fans out of there, hoses are off. And I want to go spin that engine around. We're gonna look at the belt and hopefully you can kind of see Right down in here. We're going to run around and make a little smiley face on top so we know that the belt has made a full path. And we're just going to do an inspection and see if we see anything that's going to be detrimental. I'm trying to. So we either got to go all the way and you do the water pump, you do the timing belt, you do the upper and lower radiator hose, you do the radiator, you change the coolant, you're about $500 worth of stuff to go and do. And like I said, this truck is kind of towards the end of its, it's my backup truck now. I, I replaced the truck and this is more, if I have to go in the woods, you're really crappy weather or, you know, launch a boat in the water. This is what this truck has been delegated for so I don't know if I really want to put that into it I do not see any cracking I don't see any teeth yet we got a ways to go but
And this truck was driven, uh, I lost you. Got bumped, I didn't see you. And the other thing too is you also got to kind of where you go through all that and you find out that the valves hit because this is a interference engine so there's always a chance not that it jumped that far but it could have taken out yeah valves bent the valves and got no compression in a bunch of cylinders and that would suck too. And pretty much an easy you need an engine. And at that point, I think I would tr kick this truck to the curb. It's done me well enough. I'm also kind of looking for like a squished smiley face of the the mouse. <laughs> Can I keep where we got steamrolled? My, uh, there it goes. My timing belt, I don't remember timing belt, my serpentine belt jumped off the pulley. I didn't have the bolts tight enough on the, uh, when I took the fan off and it walked a little on me. That's like a little bit of rusty spots there, huh? And there's our smiley face again. I think right there is where he went too. That looks to be like where the stain is. From where he went woohoo, whipped up and around and went for his ride. Yep. All right, so we have to be able to get to the tensioner at least anyway. So I gotta figure out where that is on the belt assembly. So I think we have to get some crap off of here anyway to dig in. Let me go figure that out. We have to get this off to fix the leak so let's start getting that off I would think I think it's right about right about here there's a there's an idler pulley a tensioner pulley rather that is right in there it's got a, like a plunger I don't even get the access to plunger from the outside I should look it up when you get the belts out of the way get some stuff out of the way dig a little further for us let's see if we get that thermostat housing to pop off of there I think it's just two bolts. He's peeing. Let me move that pan over. There we go. All right. Off that hose. It's like yeah, the base of that gasket failed. Right in there. If they even had a gasket, I don't know if it had one or not, or it was just sealant. It looks like it's just all sealant. That's got an O-ring on it, that one. Don't know if there's a seal that went around there. I do see a lot of this rubber crap. Make sure we don't have any, any cracks or anything. Hmm. Let's get this cover off down below. And that should give us access to the... Uh, I think the adjuster is back in there, the tensioner, I should say, the tensioner for the uh, serpentine belt, because we need to back that off so that we have some play to work with and move it around. Any more? There you go. Yeah, I think that's our, that might, it's either just an idler, or is that the water pump itself? Might have to dig a little more. Might have to actually go look it up, huh? <laughs> God forbid. It's in there somewhere. 
Okay, so I decided to try to fix what we have here and move things back into the correct position. From the bottom, there's a tensioner that comes with a little hydraulic zone, spring-loaded hydraulic zone that takes the slack out. It's got two bolts in it. I'm gonna go drop that down. I think you have to collapse that. Again, I did one a long time ago. You collapse it, I think you put a pin in it and it holds it in the collapsed position and then you can put it back, bolt it back up where it is and you pull the pin out and it'll expand to take it out of there. We need to get rid of that to get some free play so that we can step this guy up over where it is. So I'm gonna get that pin out of our way. I think we'll probably be better off getting access from the bottom to get that out of there. I'm not gonna be able to get up there and film when it's getting removed. I'm gonna remove these two and it's this cylinder right here. Let me get that popped out of there and see if we can get some free play. Yep, my memory serves me correct. So that has to get collapsed. It's hydraulic, it's got a lot of pressure on it and then you put a pin in there and that holds it in place. But let's go drop it back down and see if we can get that belt put back on where it goes before we even bother dealing with that. Okay, see if that gave us any play. It should be able to pull up. There it goes. Whoop. <laughs> did it literally just pop right in to where it needs to be? It did. I'm afraid to let go. I don't know if it's going to go any further. It literally popped the cam right into the mark where it needed to go. Awesome. I think we're, we're a hair off. Um, we want... Yeah, we want the tension. We want the free play on this side. We want no nothing on here. So let me see if I get that tensioner back in and take that up. And we could rotate it around. That was easy. I thought it was going to fight me a little bit. So I am on zero on the bottom. I am lined up to that straight line. I think this is after top dead center. I think this is actually zero and this is after top dead center. It's kind of confusing, but it is what it is, right? I think uh, when you're doing it, new belts come with a timing mark on them they'll have like a, an l and an r and a line on them and in a line you have the the crank pulley off down below there's dots that are underneath there that you line everything up with but yeah i'm going with this all right let's see if we get that tensioner collapsed and uh, put that back up in there so this is the way it gets installed in the car so this would be facing us so we can get that to I think get a straight squeeze on it. That's got a ton of pressure on it. Okay. You gotta step back a little. There you go. Your belly's hanging out. I don't know, maybe get like a little, maybe an Allen wrench. It'll fit in there. Something we can grab on a pull after it's in there, right? And it kind of a little too far. There it is. We're across the other side. That should be good. And then we can give her a pull the grenade once it's up in there. See if we can all fit in there. It's gonna be cute, huh? Gotta go like that. And then I can't see anything. And neither can you. Come on, get started. There's antifreeze dripping in your hair right now. See if I run that one up at least. That would be able to start it. Antifreeze getting in the camera is probably not a great idea. I gotta move you over. Your, the camera, your antifreeze is dripping off your ear. <laughs> You're literally underneath the. Uh... 
lower radiator hose. Out, out spout. What? Let's go pull that grenade. Hope we can get that out of there. Do your thing. <laughs> Slowly as it slides out. Yeah, back up top. Looks like we got a, a bunch of play in the bottom. The bottom is taut. Well, that's where the tensioner is. Let's give that a little rock back and forth. And it, it should allow it to come. There we go. I'm going to go spinner all the way around. And we'll see how our marks line up and how we maintain. Yeah, we're pretty good now. But we might be one tooth off, possibly. That's right on zero right there. See, we're good on that one. We're good on the crank right over there. And we maintain over here. Yeah, that one's good too. Nice. I'm gonna go probably just spin it one more time around just to make myself overly sure. I'm gonna inspect the belt one more time. If I see anything that's a little funky, I might hit with an air gun, blow out some crap, try to blow out maybe some of the passages I might find is uh his cousin or something might be down in there. I'm actually gonna maybe even take a bore scope. I'll take a peek down in that lower section. The thing is you gotta get the, the crank pulley off to get to the, the marks that are down there. The radiator probably have to come out because they have to get an impact gun. They have a special tool to hold it, but I just don't have enough room to hammer all that stuff in there. And the more I start taking apart, this is a very rusty truck. So the, the more I fight with stuff, you know, you try to be limited as much as possible, even just a little plastic cover on one of them, that one right there. That stud right there. You can see how rusty that was just trying to get that apart on that little plastic cover. And it ended up snapping off. So, other hardware, the more I dig into it, it's going to cause more. So, I'm trying to, you know, just be the easiest. I'm trying to tackle this the easiest as possible without digging too much of a hole. You start breaking stuff off. You make a, a two hour job. A, 10 hour job by digging into it so and you look at the floor and you see this what's that uh oh i know what that is <laughs> apparently it was on top of that little hydraulic cylinder for the uh, tensioner and the allen wrench would have went through that i'm gonna go pop that back down put it through again and rotate it around again make sure we don't jump time we do it right because we do it twice I bet there was one or two of you already writing comments saying you forgot to put that on there. Now you got to go erase your comment. Let's see, clean up some surfaces there. that surface get our all that crap off of it and I wonder what I should use I got something called the right stuff I've used that before I've had pretty good luck with it problem is I think this has a, a decent amount of pressure to it you know 10 psi or so I still have to clean up that surface too We should have done that first, huh? I said we hit her a little bit of cheese whiz. I'm actually going to go and before I put the O-ring on, let's go shoot some under it. That's enough to spread it around. A little bit of corrosion in there. Let's get that on there. 
and then we'll give her a little dosing on top. Kind of bury it. Probably it's not supposed to have any seal on there at all, but that's what we're going with. And then here, there was nothing there, but we're going to go make ourselves a nice little ring going around. I'm probably going to let that sit up a little bit too. We're going to have a tad more than less. You can see where, because it was leaking down here. Just judging by where the bolt holes are, you would think that um, it would have a little bit more center because this this whole corner is kind of under supported. Probably the best way to put it. Let's get some pack down in there. So I'm gonna let this sit up for about I don't know 10 minutes or so, and then we'll put it on. And um, we're a little too thick on this side. I got overzealous. I don't think it's gonna hurt anything, but it might squeeze into the, the gap a little. And I'm gonna put a light coat over on the engine right now, much thinner than that, but just so that it's wet, so that when they touch each other, it, there's already a bond. I don't know if they go into the jacket or not. I'm gonna throw a little bit of this exterior crud on the threads. I already got this one. Go give them a little bit of, just a little bit of something. Yeah, I don't think those jackets go all the way through just in case there's something on the threads in case it's a, uh, a water port on the other side doesn't come and leak around the bolt. If you had a water spot in your eye, it cleaned you. All right, so let the smooshing begin. So we need to grab that hose probably first. that started o-ring oh. where are you I think what we'll do is just we'll run those in until they're kind of snug just a little and then we'll let it set up some more then we'll tighten it down the last little bit give her uh, so it doesn't squeeze everything out let's, let's just get it close starting to ooze out I'm gonna let that set up for I don't know another 10-15 minutes I'm gonna screw around I'll put some hose clamps on start put some other stuff together and then the last thing we'll do is we'll suck them down with a little bit of preload uh, we could probably fire it up uh, I, I want to let that sit for till all that stuff hardens up which is maybe overnight but if we don't put any cooling in it maybe we could fire it up either that or I'll kind of get buttoned up and we'll fire it up in the morning and, and see how it does I just don't want to push my luck with any kind of leaks and uh, having to go do that over again. Buttoned everything else up. Everything except for the uh, the duct that goes through here and fluid. So I'm gonna snuck that down. And I'm gonna go let this sit overnight. It's getting kind of late in the evening. Now I wanna go eat. And hopefully, we we'll come back, we'll put some fluid in it, put that duct on the top, we'll fire it up and. <laughs> Hopefully it runs on all eight cylinders. I mean, they bend a valve. I don't think so. I don't think it moved that far, but you never know. Hey guys, so it's the next day, and we're gonna go put some coolant in it very shortly. I forgot to take a quick peek underneath for the oxygen sensor, and it is bank one, sensor two. So the two are the ones behind the cats, which is that one, which is new. Front one's new over there. That front one's new. And the only one that hasn't been replaced is that one. And that's the one that's acting up. So as long as our engine is good and we bring it back, then we'll order that. And I also went and I got some uh, barn chain oil to give it a respray. You can still see how the old stuff 
is doing its thing, how it makes that waxy coating on there. But it does wash off in certain places, so. I'm probably not gonna show it on video, but I'm gonna run around with a scraper, get off whatever loose stuff I can and give it another shot. Again, it's been four years since it's been coated. So certain areas that are exposed, more than others, it kind of washes off a little bit. See a little bit more of an undisturbed area. That's what it does. You write your name in it. Let's see how that stuff is. I'd say pretty good. I was hoping to have it stiffen up a little bit more than that. But work with what we got. Yeah, I know, there's a joke there. I think I need a taller funnel, what do you think? <laughs> Never anything skinny enough to go down. The throat of it. I gotta go mix with water in there too, about 70-30 mix. All right, I reset the codes. You got coolant in it. Let's go fire it up and make sure nothing goes boom, hopefully. The check engine light would come on right away. Oh, it sounds much better. I would say we have no miss. Go out, keep anything spewing out of it. Looks good. I'm gonna go move cars around. I'm gonna put it outside, let it run for a while, let it come up to temp, and then we're gonna have to probably add a little bit of antifreeze to it. Yeah, it's been about, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. That's much better. Yeah, that's how she's supposed to run. Nice and quiet. Don't see any leaks. Busted one bolt, it's rotted out. I'm just gonna drill it out and tie wrap right around it. And then put the cover back on over the uh, throttle body. I'm happy with that. It kind of worked out pretty good. Again, I, I'm gonna do some more maintenance on it, but I'll do it off film. I gotta clean the battery terminals up. I wanna undercoat it again, change the oil, that kind of thing, and do that oxygen sensor now that I know the engine's okay. Moving day. Eviction notice served.
see if the new one matches. Make sure the wire is long enough. It looks to be. I don't think there's any big left of the nuts that were holding that on there. Maybe a couple of love taps. And that's it. <laughs> yeah, that, might have to uh, run a tap over those threads, huh? There's literally nothing left. When you have to, when you can take them out without removing any bolts, look at the crud that's on that too, huh? Just can't get 200,000 miles out of them anymore. We can go clean all that up, get our new one on there. I gotta see what I can do about these threads. What there is of threads. If there's any threads. Hey, they look, they look fun. Snap. Knew it. Oh well. I tried. But unfortunately, this exhaust system has been gutted before, so you can't remove that pipe. That pipe is welded to that pipe. It's all one piece, kind of patchwork together. It would be part of the cat. You have to order the whole catalytic converter. So we can't like drop it down, drill them out, and get it. But what I'm thinking is maybe what we'll do is we'll just put it in, we'll index it 90 degrees. And maybe we'll weld a nut here and then a nut here and then suck it down like that. I don't think it's going to matter the fact that it's not like that. As long as we can get it attached down and it seals down. It kind of seals on that that inner ring anyway, right there. Maybe we can still be able to unbolt it if it is a problem. So I'm going to go clean that up. The bottom one should be a problem to weld. The top one's going to be a little on the tricky side just because you don't have much room to get up around there to go see it. You gotta do what you gotta do, right? Now I gotta go disconnect the battery on the truck again so we don't kill any electrical components because well, sometimes you weld through the exhaust, it grounds through it and screws stuff up. All right, let's see what we can come up with. Well, after screwing around with it, I decided to change my mind a little. I think I'm gonna go with studs. That way I can weld them on, then remove the nuts. If, if I welded a nut down here, I would have to really kind of get in there good, especially on the top side. The bottom side, I can get it, but the top side, you just can't see. So I'll weld that up. So I'll, plus we're pulling even where if I weld the nut on it, the nut's going to want to try to fold up as you draw up on it. Well, this will give us a bit more strength. So hopefully I don't burn through on the top side. I'm going to go start with the bottom one and then I could leave it kind of attached like it is to help center it and then do the top. Just, yeah, again, something to support it and get rid of that top pair of ice grips. Maybe give me a little bit more room. I don't want to well flash the camera so I didn't do a demo as we're going. That's the easy one. <laughs> now we got to get the hard one on the other side. Wish me luck. As long as the nuts will come off and the bracket can come off, and then we know the new one will fit on. That's an old one that I had. I wasn't going to weld on an old one. I was only able to get to one side of the top one, but it's a it's a beefy weld that's on there. It's a good at least a half inch long. 
these might be a little splayed out. I might have to bend them in a hair. You're gonna find out right now though. As long as it comes off. Yeah, a little splayed out. Go we'll grab them with some pliers. Actually, I'm gonna put this yank this right off of here. There we go. Good. Let's see if we can get a gasket on there. Yeah, I'm gonna be now that it's out of, that's out of the way. I'm gonna go grab that with a pair of pliers. Just squeeze it just a, a hair together a little bit, and I think we're fine. I was more concerned with it, you know, how they are down here. Worst case, we could always clip them back a little bit. We don't need all that stud, but sometimes you just need to be a bigger stud. That was enough. There we go. Let's put the new one on there. All right, a couple of nuts down on that. I think that'll work just, just fine for us. Oops, oh, I bumped you. Some gut sticking out. I think that might be a winner for us. So what was your thought? What would you have put together? Yeah, I think that'll be just fine. Crank down on them. Go run our wire up. Plug it in. And we are oxygen scented all over again. Well, it's all set to go pop the tires off and start scraping a little bit and get it ready for doing the oil undercoat. And while I was doing that, I could rotate the tires because it's been since they've been on there, <laughs> since they haven't been done. And they have this funky looking lug set up, a little adapter that you go to it. And I'm like, yeah, it's in the truck. And I remember hearing it in the console rattling around. I go to it and it's a regular lug nut. <laughs> I tore the truck apart. I do not have it. It's a good thing in a way that I kind of found out now. Instead of being someplace in the middle of nowhere and not being able to get them off. So that's where I'm stuck. I even looked in my other truck, all the work bags that I have with like tools and stuff in them. It's not in any of them. I thought it would have been in the glove box, which this was rattling around. I thought it was it. I have a feeling I got rid of the other wheels and I thought <laughs> this was one of them I, that I took out from it. I don't know what the deal is with that, but that is not going to work for me. If anybody can ID what that is it's like a six point reversed i don't know if you can see it or not head on it i gotta get one of those apparently <laughs> i even check like where the jack bag is in the truck underneath the seat it's just not in it so oh well so close well i'm definitely to the messy part of the job and this tarp was used once before in the blue truck and again i'm doing undercoating with a uh, barn chain oil uh, the oil was already there, but not all that black cruddy crap. That's all the stuff I scraped off and blew out with an air gun and got off the frame and got it ready for prepping it for the next round. It's getting, you know, the, the frame's getting thin in spots to back where they, they overlap each other. It's getting real flaky in between. No rot holes or anything in it, but, you know, it's definitely getting to that point where it's going to need to... Uh, to be you got to call it at some point you know uh it's been four years probably get another two years out of it is a guess on my part but let's get uh i don't know what i can show i don't want to get the camera all contaminated but i just want to give you a, kind of a quick idea what i go about doing got a big like three foot air gun that i use for blowing all the the crap out you get up at all in the crevices and everywhere get all the most of the dirt off I, this has already hit once before I did this again four years ago I sprayed it and you can see all the lower areas get all dried out where you, you see all the rust it's where it's all gotten washed off but the you know the main parts 
up in here have stayed pretty good. So we get prepped up, see if we can turn the camera on for a couple of seconds while I'm doing it, and then I'll continue on. So I'm picking just barn chain oil. It's like seven bucks a gallon, it's fairly cheap. And the problem is it uh, is a little too thick to spray with what's called the Schultz gun. This is a Schultz gun. This one says fluid film on it. I think they're like 30 bucks on eBay, but it's meant for shooting the wet tacky kind of undercoating like fluid film is. So it needs to be thinned just a little bit so it's able to be sprayed. And each time I kind of play around with a different Thing, thinning agent you can see how like gloppy this is this is my mixed jug I'll dump the whole gallon in there and then what I'm gonna do I'm gonna come back with that kerosene that you see there and I'll thin it with the kerosene just it, I'll, I'll kind of sneak up on it I'll probably put maybe a quart to a gallon a kerosene maybe not even that much I'll try and spray it if it's a little too thick I'll just dump the gun back into the bucket thin it out a little bit more so I get the Right mix again, just enough so it'll spray. That's, and then the kerosene kind of evaporates away over time and then it leaves that thick, heavy, oily coating on all the frame, which uh, you want to do when the car is dry. Like this has been in a garage for, I don't know, about a week or so. So there's no water underneath there. I'm not trapping any water between the oil and the frame. It's, this is going to be able to get in there. I, I always uh, call it like, you know, putting hot butter and toast and it goes into all the pores. It's kind of the same idea. It kind of seeps in all the little areas and then the kerosene evaporates away and then that oil sticks there. The best bet is to take it down a dusty road and drive it down a dusty road after you're done. And then it gets like a little bit of like cakiness to it, like cake batter. But if, if you ever have to do a repair or anything, you can clean it. Uh, you know, the brake clean. And... Uh, you have to I mean, you can get a little bit more aggressive but you can take the stuff off if you have to do a repair or work on something you just want to make sure all your repairs are done if you're going to do exhaust or something you want to make sure you do them first before you do this because it's nasty to work under the truck but that's what we deal with in new england this is a 16 year old truck with 200,000 miles on it and it was you know pretty much dead when i got it for uh, having a bad frame then we did the repairs I'm gonna go dump some of that in there and then dump some of that in the gun. I just poured that on top. You can see how much I've gone. It was probably about an inch, maybe a little under an inch to, what do you call that, six inches? Six to one? I shake that up and give it a spray. So I'm gonna start from the middle of the truck. I'm gonna go do all the sides on the inside here and Kind of work my way to the middle, flip around, I'll do the same, and then I'll go around the outside so I don't have to be underneath all the crap dripping. But that's a little thick. I'm gonna work with it a little bit. I might have to thin it out a little bit more. Now you know why I need the tarp. I'm going to use up this bottle with uh, this thickness. I'm going to thin it a little bit more though for the future. You get it to not sputter as much, you know. I'm going to try my best just to stay away from the rubber components. That's about all I'm going to do with you guys because I don't want the camera getting contaminated and the crap just goes everywhere. So I'll see you in a little bit. So I know it's about an hour, hour and a half later after spraying it. Of course, it does make a mess. You definitely don't want to wear good clothes. <laughs> you guys that don't live in a Rust Belt probably think we're nuts, don't you? Having to deal with all this. Eh, it is what it is. I soaked down pretty good. The exhaust, you know, you best not to hit the exhaust, but you hit the, the body above it and it, it drips down. So I have to wipe that down. And uh, usually what I do is I start it up and I run it, kind of let it burn some of the stuff off the exhaust, let it cool off. You don't want it to, you know, spontaneously explode on you. <laughs> and, uh, you know, give it a couple of heat cycles and it'll burn off fairly quickly. And uh, just stay away from all the bushings and the suspension and brake components as best as possible but it's got a, a decent soak on it I'm 
sure there's areas I missed, but once you get about two or three coats, once you do it about two or three times, you pretty much got all the places covered. Like all this stuff is already protected. Even if uh, I, I missed it when it's dry here, there's still material on there from the last time. And the most important part really isn't the externals. It's, it's making sure that you spray inside all the rails and all the tubes and everything, because that's really where it rusts. The water gets stuck inside there and usually a lot of the, the ports get blocked and uh, water can't come out of it and it causes them to corrode. Well, like I said, with you know butter on toast, you can see the rust that's up inside here, but that oil soaks into those rusty pores and now that it's dry, you know, water has a hard time trying to make, th make it through that barrier. And we just have it tough between, you know, living close to the ocean and the salt that they use on it. It's not even salt, I think it's brine that they use. There's a, uh, I'm trying to think of the name of it. Sodium phosphate? No, that's an acid, I think. There's uh, different materials that they use that uh, they have for melting the snow, but it's even worse than salt. It eats them even faster. Yeah, you can see the exhaust isn't hit on this side so much, but that that muffler going back, I'm gonna wipe that down with a rag before I take it down. But this should get us another couple years out of this truck, and you know that, that'll make it six years that this was a pretty much a junk truck when I got it with its issues and it extended its life at least another six years. And even at that point, if it gets really rusty, it could still be a yard truck, maybe hang a plow or something on it. All right, the tarps. You know, I, I got two more vehicles to do and then I'll be done and I'll just roll these up and uh, I fold them over each other all the way and you just kind of leave the, you book it so that you're not having a clean tarp that's underneath get dirty from the old stuff. I just put it back in the corner and then unfold it again to go spray the next vehicle down. And I just wanted to go show that. Yeah, we just knock off all the heavy stuff that's on it. Everything else can stay. There we go. Especially the cats. The cats get really hot. The further back on the exhaust system you go, the less uh, important it is. Out for a little beat run, just waiting for the cars to go by. We've got a nice high speed road to go on. We'll give her a little uh, full throttle, which we'll make sure we got some room to go, which looks pretty good. I don't want to catch up to that car too fast. All right, I would say right about now, get her out over the rumble strips. Say everything has been corrected. I'm happy about that. And hey, we'll cruise the back road going back home. About 10 15 miles away from my my shop. And I'm glad, I'm glad I was able to keep this one alive. Uh, it, I, it doesn't owe me anything. Like I said, I paid 2800 bucks for it. First time around, we put $400 into fixing what was wrong with it, welding up the frame and fixing the rear end. I think we put a mirror and a tail light on it at that time. And that was about four years ago. And pretty much other than changing oil, and I've got a set of used tires. Woo. A set of used tires for it, threw them on. That's really about it. And it's been uh, doing me quite well. I, I, I try to keep one vehicle as a backup and I have right now four drivers between my wife and I and it's going down to three. The Sequoia is leaving. Uh, I made a trade on that. My wife, this, uh, the FJ Cruiser, which is like a Toyota's version of a, a Jeep, so to speak. I got that for her as a toy. There's a video of that about a year ago. And ever since she got that, she loves it. She has not used the Sequoia at all. There's a 2008 Sequoia, which she's been driving uh, about three or four years now. Uh, she just found that was a little too big for her and she's not used that at all. So I've made a trade 
to get rid of that but that has to be gone through and make sure that it's in good shape i ordered a water pump radiator radiator hoses timing bell you know all the you know, fluid changes need to be done on that one and that one's getting traded out that'll probably be a video for another time anyway so i like to keep one vehicle so we have two drivers it'd be her her truck the fj and then my blue tundra are the two normal trucks that we use and then one for backup which is this truck case one of the two of them have an issue while it's down i can um, have something else to be driven around and also even like in really bad weather and stuff you have a, a beater so to speak it's very common up here to have a what's called a winter beater and that's what this truck is so you take it out in the salty crappy weather and you try to save the other vehicles as much as you can and uh, that's what this has uh, been for a while and uh, we'll continue to do it probably get another I'm, I'm hoping for another two years out of it as long as you know keep an eye on the frame see what condition it goes into if it really starts getting crunchy or you know has any other issues at that point uh, maybe uh, rotate another one into the mix but for now uh, it's good it's doing fine it's good for uh you know hauling boats in and out of the water yard sale truck putting crap in the back i got there's a winch mounted in the bed of this truck so for you know grabbing tractors and atvs and stuff putting them in the back of the bed of the truck this is the one i use for that the other truck has a cap on it so you know anything that's tall you can't get it in it and you know just again you know, my our all-around beater truck take it into woods you know, we, we go on some excursions that um, are say non-paved roads that kind of thing that's where uh, this comes in handy so plus it's got the bigger cab we have the, the dog likes the window in the back that goes down you know, she sticks her head out the back window in this truck so it's got that nice feature to it too so at some point <laughs> we'll retire but it's gonna live uh to go on again i guess uh, i just want to take a second to thank all you guys for kind of hanging out it's been a, a really good year although everything that's been going on it's uh, been a good year as far as youtube is concerned and you guys watch my videos and taking the time to hang out with me and i just kind of want to share that with you that uh, i really thank you guys i appreciate it and uh, it means a lot to me and uh, really like the fact that you guys hang out and uh, we just get to wrench in a garage it's it's something i grew up as a kid doing you know you always you had a neighbor or something's house that you hung out and uh, you got a good education just by uh, you know camaraderie of uh, turn the wrenches so to speak and I feel that I share that with you guys all right guys we're coming up to the intersection I'm gonna make a turn and uh, so I'm gonna sign off I want to thank you again for all hanging out I'll see you soon later